I want to thank you again for your help. We couldn't have survived without you. Don't mention it. Have you ever seen such creatures? Those that flew? Well, they weren't Sorax, for sure. No, but they're described in some of my people's legends. They're called demons. Demons, you say? Well, they seem to back up the Sorax. It can't be a coincidence. But why us? You mean you? First your father, then you. Someone has a grudge against your family. Sorax and demons. That's not the same as a jealous neighbor. Does your family have political power? The Snow Alliance is a democratic system. Each clan has votes based on its numbers. So no, we're not particularly influential. How wealthy are the Kaikonans? We're wealthy, but less so than the Keskainen clan, for instance. I don't see how killing me would make anyone else richer. Does your family owe money to someone? Not that I know of, no. Business is pretty good, from what my father told me. Rook, you uh, sure you want to ask something that blunt? I mean, I guess it depends on how he phrases it. Is your family hiding a secret? What is that supposed to mean? Oh, you know, centuries-long betrayal. Kidnap children, anything like that? You're ridiculous. We don't have any dark secrets. And yet, there's the Pact of the Claw between five clans from before the Snow Alliance was founded. But it's just tradition. It has no political weight. Don't brush this off so quickly. There may be something there. I'm sorry. I can't say any more right now. When we get home, I might be able to tell you more. I will have to get my father's amulet anyway. Sure. I have so many questions. I feel like I don't even know my own family's traditions. Maybe we're being too hard on you. You just lost your father. I have to be strong. Especially with Sorax and demons threatening my homeland. I'm glad you've come. I know it's not your country. Masgarth is free of the Sorax. We have to chase them wherever they are. You can count on me to help you. Good to know. Now we should all get a good night's sleep. I'll take the first shift. Hey, Redcon Raider here. And welcome back to Solasta, Palace of Ice. As today, we continue our journey to Kalpopunki. Or something to that effect. And, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, I, I have to say, I feel like a lot of those cutscenes are markedly improved over the, the presentation we saw in the earlier campaigns. I mean, obviously, still a bit unpolished in some areas, um, especially when it comes to the voice acting on just random side characters, brief one-off interactions. But the main ones, the main ones seem pretty well done, and, uh, the banter seems much more organic between the party members. That said, I'm sure it's just a matter of time before we're once again fighting for our lives. Such is the nature of your average adventure. Oh, chilled. Yep, I guess it was just a matter of time. Slowed and suffer penalties to dex and con ability checks and savings throws. Wow. That is pretty rough. Um... Okay, well, I didn't realize it was going to be that serious. So we may need to invest in more items like this one. I mean, I'm sure we'll find some appropriate items in early caches, but... For now, I think we'll toss this to Russ. He is our de facto rogue stand-in. Best to keep his dex checks unhindered. Yeah, we'll lose the headband of intellect for now. That was really just a vanity item anyway. A modest plus one bonus on his int-based skills. But nothing we can't live without. Uh, 
Okay, let's give this place a gander. At last, it stopped snowing. Welcome home, my lady. Ah, Misuk. It's good to see you. I'm sorry for your father, my lady. We'll find the murderers, I swear it. We will, together. I promise you, justice will be done. Now is the time to mourn. We have guests, the heroes who won the battle at the Rift. Hi there. That's a damn good curriculum. Welcome to Kaupapunki. Thanks. Misuk is my, um... Security officer. So, I suppose everybody's here? The whole clan. As expected. Well, my friends, consider yourselves at home. My people's hospitality is well known. I would like to see my father before the ceremony. Of course. Stay in the light, my lady. So, uh, we're all in agreement that Masuk is probably a bad guy, right? She is super shady, and she's using the kind of over-the-top voice that I would use for a... a lizard trying to pretend it's trustworthy. But hey, maybe they'll, uh, maybe they'll surprise me. And we've got merchants. You know what? Um, it's going to take a minute for me to rummage through all the various merchant offerings and take in the site. So let's skip forward a bit. We'll just uh, we'll touch on the highlights. Keep things moving. Look, the flag of the antiquarians. Of course, it's their headquarters. Shall we knock and have a little chat about their pal, Halman Summer? I hear they went through a purge after his betrayal. Oh yeah, I guess he was a Sorak, wasn't he? It's been a while. A note. Do not touch. A king's ransom in blue glacier crystals stacked in the open. Unique to the area, these blue crystals are exported all over the eastern Ferendrod. The dwarves watch closely. And then we've got a couple of guards off to the side here. Chatting about mysterious noises in the mine, which is just below us. I'm sure that's relevant. The First Lord, Kaikonan, honored founding father, just and mighty warrior. His vast statue of a dwarf in typical grandiose style broods with quiet intent. The noble nose and brow look familiar. Odgird Brightfist, Speaker of the Pact, 186 AC to 323 AC, commissioned as a replacement by House Kaikonan. A newly built statue of a proud and noble dwarven lady stands guard over the city. Oh, here we go. Magic utility items, including boots of striding and springing. Though... We've got long stride now, so it's not as big a deal. But that ring of dark vision, that could come in handy. Especially since it doesn't look like it needs attunement. Nor does this ring of detect invisible. Is that right? Really? I'm so used to everything requiring attunement, that seems weird to give permanent spell effects without it. Ring of Feather Falling. Ring of All Words, we're familiar with that one. The Amendment. 
Cast mage armor at will. Morphalax the Unquenched is legally bound to provide an armor of shadow to any warlock attuned to this hellish legal finding. Well, that clearly says mage armor, not armor of shadow, but... Still. Okay, you know what? I am seeing some very useful items here, so... One moment, I'm just going to crunch some numbers real quick, see what we can afford, what we really need, and fill out some slots. Hey, and we're back. About 5,000 gold lighter, but with a bevy of new items to help shore up some of our weak spots, especially uh, granting dark vision to Varshun. Though obviously we picked up a few nice convenience items as well. I mean, why not? We have the... We have both the cash and the slots. Look at that. The town is literally built on this glacier. This tower must be very old to be stuck in the ice like that. Reminds me of the Tower of KLM. Actually, this place was too far from the Aerolite to be affected by the Cataclysm. Fine. You're smarter than me. <laughs> well, that... That is technically true, now that he's not rocking that headband. But it's fine. And we are out of city, so this must be the end. Every other door we've passed has been locked. Hey, we're in. And what have we got here? Ooh, recipes. All right, I'll have to earmark that for later study. We're not exactly swimming in premium ingredients right now, anyway. Temple of Oblivion, under the eye of Maraiki. Resident priest, Maja Stronghide. Ordinated by High Solace on the 4th of Darun, 1018 AC. Interesting. Oh, and we've got scavengers. Nice. Clear skies, adventurers. What can I do for you? What's the news? Not bad, even so far from the Badlands. But between Gallivan and Sorex, clients get scarce. Can we see your wares? Sure. Right, so not much of note here aside from... Maybe the poison recipes, but those are pretty much useless for us. Because we did not bring a poison crafter this time. But generally speaking, the real value of the salvagers or scavengers, for those who haven't watched the previous two series, is that they're largely a convenience faction. They go and scavenge the locations that you pass through, picking up all the items you missed. And then when you visit them afterwards, you can collect whatever you want to keep and have them sell the rest for a bulk rate. Less than you would have gotten if you carried it back yourself, but like I said, it's a, it's a convenience feature. And speaking of poison crafting, 
It's always reassuring to find a poisoner's kit stashed behind the place you're about to rent a room at. I'm sure that's... I'm sure that's fine. I heard Lady Vigdis was back from Asgarth. And not alone, apparently. They say she returned with heroes of some kind. That's us. They're talking about us. Oh, we'll take those. Pretty sure we've already got those recipes unlocked, but we'll give it a peek. Alright, let's go have a chat with the innkeep. It's uh, been a while since our last fight. I feel like we're due one any time now. Well met, strangers. What's your poison? Yeah, maybe not the best phrasing, considering what I found out back. How's your beer? Dark, bitter, and strong. Better than their shitty drink they brew in the south. You bet. What news? Our lord is dead. Murdered. Damn Sorax. We heard. We'd like to rest. Separate beds. Eh, as long as you pay, you do, you. Enjoy your four beds. Yes, I will. Thank you. No level ups yet. Fair enough. We haven't really done much. Alright, let's go catch up with Big Dis. And I am sure someone else will be catching up with her around the same time. We're setting up for a classic ambush here. Why else would they have gone out of their way to separate us from her? And then have us pass some time? Though I suppose there is the outside chance that she's since been replaced by a Sorak. Hail and well met, my friend. Welcome to Kaiken and Keep. I guess left is the way we're supposed to go. So we'll, of course, tilt right. Let's get some lights up. Pakri, Evo, see you. Ah. Alright, fair enough. Let's go where we're supposed to go. Thaddeus Cobblestone. We're here to see Lady Victus. My lady is preparing for a funeral. We know that. Good. Um... So... Do you know who we are? Not family members. This is important. Yes, I'm sure it is. What's wrong with you? I do not think this is a suitable time to bother, my lady. What's going on here? Your... butler does not wish to let us in. Thaddeus! My lady, this is a private matter. I don't believe strangers Thaddeus. should... Thaddeus! They are my guests of honor. I'm terribly sorry, my lady. Please, come in. 
What is this private matter? The wake for my father's funeral. I'd like you to be present. Oh, thanks. It's a privilege, my lady. You clearly don't know my family. This is about tradition, not emotion. Oh, by the way, I asked about the Pact of the Claw. Great. So what can you tell us about it? It appears the Pact is the reason why the five main clans, the Vatmikint, exist. It was sealed before the Cataclysm, which is why its origins were lost in time. But it used to be much more important than it is nowadays. Anything about demons in that story then? No, but Vatmikint means guardian. So it sounds like it was made to protect the land. I hope to learn more after the wake, when I have more time to help you. It's fine. You should be with your family. It's important. We don't have much of a lead so far. And yet, we still consider you a primary target for Sorax. Which means we need to keep our eyes open. And I shall do the same. Milady, everyone's ready. Let's go then. It's showtime. Dear friends, family and honored guests, we are gathered this day to honor my father, our Lord Kaikonen Vatia, Protector of Etelin Vatmikant. I almost forgot. She's going to be the new clan chief. Think they're all happy about that. Who knows? Shh! Kaikonen Vatia, we bring you to rest in the halls of our ancestors. May the gods keep your soul, our fallen lord. Honor the fallen. Honor the fallen. Honor the fallen. Honor the fallen. From ice you were born, with steel you have ruled. On stone you have fallen, in ice you will rest. Farewell, dear father. Something's missing. Is that so? Wow, so we're going into investigation mode now. Interesting. I've got to say, I was not anticipating that we might have an entire episode of Celesta with no fighting in it. Olaf, the Yellow King. We need to find the murderer. May you rest in the arms of Marika. There's the NPCs we're supposed to interrogate. So what's missing? Taylor the Swift Maiden. Taylor Swift. Cute. Alright, let's work our way down the line. Clear skies, my lord. Vigdis told me about you. You are heroes. Thank you for honoring our father. The honor is ours. Your father was a great chief. I don't understand how they could get to him. Maybe an inside job. Don't accuse lightly, my lord. Of course. I hope you find whoever did this. We'll do our best. Stay in the light, my lord. Oh, okay. So it's like a super short conversation. That's a bit of a relief. Clear skies, my lady. So, here you are. I'm Ragnild Bittercloud, Vigdis's cousin. I hear you're going to investigate our lord's... demise. Yes. Well, there's another house interested in leaving the clan. The Stonebeards. Interesting. Thank you for the tip. Stay in the light, my lady. The Stonebeards, eh? The most generic of dwarven clans. Clear skies, friends. Clear skies, my lord. My name is Kaikonen Sander. Bartia was my brother. Do you have a claim to the clan? Oh, no, no. No more than Victus. 
The lords of the great houses are going to decide. Vigdis is renowned. It should not be a problem. But? I heard about the attack. I fear Galavan's assassins. Our attackers were Sorax. We all know who they work for, don't we? We need to go. Stay in the light, my lord. Interesting. Okay, so... Now pieces are starting to come together because... If clan leadership is not passed down by bloodline, but by merit, then Vignus would be the current biggest obstacle for anyone else looking to claim that position. And look who it is, Misuk. I can't leave the wake now. This cannot wait, my lady. Go get the instructions. I'll figure it out. Everything all right? My friends, I need your help with an urgent matter. Of course. As you can imagine, I must stay here with my family. Can you join Masuk over there and take care of it? She will explain everything. Fine. Stay in the light, my lady. Right, so I guess we'll go work with Masuk. Conveniently separating us from our protectee. Ah, so she sent you. Your lady trusts us. Why don't you? It's my job to be wary of strangers. Anyway, she does trust you, so I will, too. Can we get to the point? Sure. I need your help to fetch something from the clan's necropolis. So, undead? What is that something you need to fetch? The Claw Amulet of Etilen Vartmecken. The one Victus is supposed to get from her father? Yes, that one. Any idea why Sorax or demons would be after it? For all I know, it's just a symbol of power for the clan chief. But it's a dragon claw, so maybe it has magical properties. Oh, yeah, well, I mean... Considering that we used dragon parts to close the Sorak portal and defeat their god in the first campaign, I would say so. I would say that many people, Sorak's included, would have a vested interest in that. Do you really need our help for such a simple task? I need three people at least, but moreover, the necropolis has been infiltrated. By whom? I don't know. But I wouldn't be surprised if there were the same people who murdered my lord. So, you're expecting a fight? Exactly. And I need more than city guards if I'm about to face a bunch of Sorax. Are you really a simple security officer? My title doesn't matter. I'm a faithful servant of House K. Conan. Yeah, she's a spy. So, do you agree to help me? Why is this so urgent? After the wake, Vigdis must take the oath. She needs the claw. Otherwise, her legitimacy would be endangered. If Lord Stonebeard heard that she lost the amulet... He could take over as clan chief. He could try, legitimately. That's a possible motive for murder. What can you tell us about the necropolis? It's ancient carved in the glacier itself. It also holds the clan's vault magically protected. The safe box for the claw amulet is in that vault. Why is the amulet not on Lord Kakonen's body? That's the point. It should have been. It has a magical safeguard. You must be sworn in to touch it. Otherwise, it teleports into its safe box in a vault. Which means someone tried to take it. Are you done? Can we go? We know enough. Yeah. Here, the wall is hiding a secret door. Classic defensive architecture. Shh. Don't disturb their morning. You know, in uh, other games, I might suspect the whole Stonebeard thing is a fake out, since it really feels like they're setting up too obviously to make them the bad guys. 
But Celesta, generally speaking, uh, although it is a very enjoyable series of campaigns, is not the most subtle when it comes to writing. So I suspect we are, in fact, looking at exactly what it's presenting it as, the Stonebeards, at least being pawns of the Sorak. But I will say, given that, generally speaking, they do seem to have improved on the, um, on the overall writing and presentation quality for the narrative in this campaign, I'm hoping I will be pleasantly surprised. This is it. Look at this place. All right. Keep your eyes open. I don't see any threat. When I came earlier, I saw shadows and heard voices. Maybe they're gone, but still, be careful. Now, the protections. To access the vault, we need to put pressure on three slabs at the same time. Which is why you need at least three people. Yes. Also, the slabs are separated, which means we have to split up. With possible enemies around? Sounds risky. We don't have a choice. Fine. Wow, I hate that. Never split the party. Sage advice, journal. Oh boy. Okay, so... How far apart are these things? We'll figure they're equidistant, and we can see their relative positions on our compass. Let's find one, and that'll give us an idea of how far out the other two are. Can we, uh, can we shoot down that stalactite? And use it as, like, a stepping stone or something? Hmm. Can't seem to target it, but I might not have line of sight. Alright, well, we can just get across here, so no big deal. That's something to keep in mind later, though, if we see any places that seem... Inaccessible. Mm. That would get us up here. But then the question becomes why? Why would we want to come up here? There's... There's nowhere to go from here. Huh. Weird. Okay, that looks conspicuous. Door's locked, but notice there's an obvious hole that we could also crawl through. Because they would not want to permanently block access to one of these slabs. And back on it goes, gotcha. Right, so we do have to have someone actively standing on each one of these three slabs. This one wasn't hugely out of the way, but it wasn't exactly close by either. Our guys are going to be basically two to three screens away from each other. Which is pretty awful if we do immediately jump into a fight. 
I'm trying to think how we can split up our five-man team into teams that could reasonably... reasonably fend for themselves in a fight. <gasps> Clearly, you have trained well. Let's, um, let's pinpoint the other two. See what the terrain's like, see what sort of obstacles we have to overcome to get to each one. As we've seen, Russell is the worst jumper of our group. I, um, I do kind of wish I'd sunk a point into athletics so I could get around a bit easier, but it is what it is. I guess I could grab those boots of striding and springing for him, but then the question would be what to drop. Huh. Actually, this one's really easy to get to. This one's just a straight shot down the main path. So this could be a good one for Russell. And someone else, maybe Varshun, to make up for Russell's lack of martial might. Honestly, the really nerve-wracking part is going to be whoever has to trigger their slab solo. Which, to be honest, is probably going to be a breath. She is two levels higher than the rest of the party. Albeit also one of the least mobile. Or no, no, she doesn't. We've actually still got Longstrider running. Right, yeah, I forgot I set that up a couple of scenes ago. <laughs> Nice jump. There's just been so much talking, I've, um... I kind of forgot about it. Looks like we've still got aid running as well, plus... Varshun's auras. you got <laughs> right so this last one's the least accessible and we've also got something over there. Oh, Russell. <sighs> hey, hey uh, I just realized we're not chilly down here. So we've got that going for us, at least. I would question it, given all the ice, but, uh, you know, I guess it would be kind of like the... The insulating Eskimo igloo effect? Maybe? Question mark? I'm certainly not going to pretend I'm an expert on ice up until a month ago. I lived in a tropical swamp. But yeah, I think uh, a plan is starting to formulate here. I'm thinking we'll have Yavreth do this one, the one we just walked away from. We'll have... Russell and Varshun on the central one. And then I guess we'll have Rook and Misuk over on the far right. I just want to see what's in this corner over here before we split up. Come on, Russ. Try to keep up. You know what, maybe I'll, um, maybe I'll grab those boots of striding and springing for your breath and pass these slippers off to Russell. Uh. 
Also, we've got a corpse impaled on spikes. That's slightly foreboding. Well done. Okay, looks like Russ is stuck, so let's... You have trained well. Something. Hey, look at that. It works. That's a fun mechanic. Skeleton key. A bone key that could be used to unlock the slab chambers. Two of which we've already picked the locks on, but that'll at least make things slightly easier for your breath when she heads back to the third. Speaking of which, one second, let me uh, get her guys in position and we'll get this slab experiment going. We'll be right back. And we're back. Okay, let's do this. So it is just straight up Sorax. I was curious if we were going to get some some agents of the Stonebeard clan or something. Oh, we're not actually in combat mode yet. Okay, let's let's see what we've got out there. Skirmisher. Macolite of Sortar. Sorak Warrior. We've got a cluster of three there. Two saboteurs and a harasser. That's new. And there's the big one, a Kratchar. That's the new elite Sorak caster unit. Are these guys... Huh. It looks like they're all trying to congregate on the Kratchar. Um... Yeah. In which case, it might be safe for us to move up behind them. Let's, uh, let's carefully bring our guys up, but we'll maintain a healthy distance. If they group up, that would theoretically make this a much easier fight. We don't really have any area nukes or anything, but we do have some decent area debuffs or crowd control spells. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're definitely moving with purpose. That's not just like a random patrol path. They are very clearly all trying to come over here. Hmm. Alright, well that really does make this very manageable. Because, in theory, if they all cluster up, a single confuse spell or or comma motion could neutralize half or more of them, giving us ample time to move the rest of our guys in even over this rough terrain. 
to pick off anyone who hasn't been who hasn't been discombobulated. In fact, this this central platform here might make a good staging ground. Assuming we have line of sight from there. I mean, I assume we would to the Kratchar because he's elevated, but now that I'm looking at it, we do have this weird this weird square outcropping that does kind of block line of sight to the rest. Let's check the LOS indicators. And, um, I think we'll bring Yvrath up behind them as well. Get them in a bit of a crossfire. Oh, yeah, she definitely has line of sight from there. We've actually got an area radiance spell that would be perfect for this, but... Yeah, yeah, the range is just way too short. We would have to get right up on them for that to be of immediate use. But that's fine. Russell's got this. Let's get our plan in emotion. Okay, I'm having some trouble with LOS. Let's get up closer. And you know what? Let's bring King's Rook around. We'll have him back up your breath. He'll move in behind her, and if he gets the chance, we'll have him drop that Spirit Guardian right on top of them. We'll also push Farshoon across. He'll be ready to rush in, immediately lay into anyone who resists. And I think we're looking pretty good here. They're just kind of chilling. Giving us sample time to get set up. All right, Russell, do your thing. Flout their concerns. saw two saves. Uh, Saboteur and the Acolyte of Sortar. The Acolyte's definitely the bigger threat, so we'll have your breath lay right into it as soon as her turn comes up. Nicely done, Russell. Fantastic work. And that's the caster, at least the weaker of the two. We've still got the the Krat Char. Whoop, there goes stealth. Moving up. start whittling the Krat Char. We've still got Surprise on it. Varshoon, moving in.
King's Ruck, moving in. We could take a pot shot, but let's let's not burn his stealth just yet. Yeah, yeah. We're actually in pretty good shape here. No no need to do anything hasty. <laughs> Cratch are saved. Too resistant to spells, so we'll just we'll tear him up. Nice. Can you reach that high? I will take that as an emphatic guess. Nicely done. And at this point, I guess we just start killing. We've taken out their heavy hitters. No LOS at this point, so we'll just set range units to ready. Yeah, yeah, Sorakath Warrior is both back in. That's one. And that's two. Which just leaves a Skirmisher and the Still Calm Harasser. And the harasser's back in. Just in time to uh, see his entire squad dead behind him.
Oh, that hurt. Right, so harassers are basically just upgraded assassins. You have your answer. So that's what they look like. How did they find a way in? That's what they do. That and shape-shifting into anyone. Actually, it looks like they've developed new tactics. They're even deadlier than before. An attack like this? Up in town? It would be a slaughter. It's not their way. They infiltrate, corrupt, and replace key people. I hope we got them all. Anyway, let's finish this. The vault is just here. Is it full of gold? Most valuables are back in the keep. The vault was used during war times only. Of course, I'd appreciate it if you didn't loot what's left in it. Killjoy. That is a fair concern. We are a group of murder hobos. Well, I'm not gonna lie, that was a bit of an anti-climax as far as end of episode battles go, but... Given the terrain, I guess I'm not really gonna complain. It would have been kind of a nightmare to approach those guys while under active fire. Plus, it really does seem to confirm that this party layout can work. I had some concerns after our bridge fight. But man, that, uh, that calm emotion, jeez. I imagine there won't be a lot of situations where the enemies just cluster up like that for us, but... That really did kind of trivialize the whole fight. That plus, um, of course, once we got Varshun and Yavreth in there, they made short work of anyone who resisted. Both of them actually have subclasses that make them extra effective against Sorak, so... Yeah, these poor schmucks had, uh, really had the odds stacked against them on this one. That said, we are past time, so unfortunately I feel like this is where we have to call it. I was hoping for a meteor fight, but we got a lot of interesting narrative, and we got one <laughs> steamroll fight. Which, you know, is certainly better than the alternative, I suppose. We'll hit the pause button for now, I will do the usual off-screen bookkeeping, and we'll pick up here next time. As we vault to the end of the necropolis and claw back that valuable trinket. See you then. Oh, and special thanks to the Raiders, the fine folks who help make these videos possible. Including, but not limited, to Revenant, Aloise, Dragon Matrix 7, Dracith, Eerie V23, Egon Alter, Emil, Excelsior, Goatleaf, James Tremay, Kazorm, Mark Giemza, Nathan Welch Jr., Overlord Ferrum, Random Passerby, Robbie B., Rowan Church, Thomas Piatkowski, Trip Hop and Skip, and Valenrook. Thanks for your support, guys. That said, if you'd also like to help support the channel, then feel free to push the buttons that do the things. Trust me, it does make a difference. Or you could even check out the PayPal, the Patreon, the Nexus GG, or the YouTube memberships. Links are in the description. Fine, you're smarter than me.